It's Lott who flinched out on the outside. I saw it from up here. I was waiting for the flag to be thrown. It was a hair late, but it was Lott who flinched at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, unfortunate penalty right there by the Eagles that kind of pushed them back in this really third and long situation. Zaylon Johnson in the backfield for the Eagles. Three receivers out wide to the left. Barnett takes a snap. He'll drop back. Three-step drop. Now he's going to scramble to the right. He's got to get rid of it. Stops at the line of scrimmage, fires it. It's going to be dropped. However, there is a penalty flag in the backfield. Likely to be a hold on the offensive lineman, Saquon Miles. Let's see what the call is. Yes, it's going to be a holding on Miles, the right tackle. So we mentioned pregame, no penalties last week. We're already up to two. Yeah, not a good start in that category. Hopefully we can kind of clean those up next offensive possession. Hollingsworth will... Come in to do the punting duties. He did not punt in week one. He punted in week two, averaged 31.2 yards per punt. He also does the kicking duties for the Eagles. He'll await the snap from Andrew Tate. A good snap, the punt's off. A high one that will bounce at the 22-yard line. It will take an eagle bounce inside the 20 all the way down to the 15-yard line, which is where the eagle defense will down it. Now we'll see who the Warriors send out for their starting quarterback. It was Landon Sims in week one and in week two. However, he was out with an injury, likely to see Chris Tucker in the ballgame. He was two of three for 78 yards in week one. It will be Tucker. Casey in the backfield with him, the running back with 38 carries, 154 yards. Two receivers out wide left. Tied in close to the line on the right side. They'll look to get it out to Casey. They do in the flats, and it's dropped. They'll say a forward pass there as it goes straight through Casey's hands. Yeah, it looked like he had room out there in the flat, just couldn't get it to come up on this first down. Second and ten coming up for the Warriors, who come in one and one after a 62-7 win over Cahoma in week one. They'll drop back to pass. A throw over the middle is caught by Howard, the leading receiver. And a pickup of just about five yards. Right at the 20-yard line is where the ball will be spotted. Howard, a tight end, now has seven catches on the year for about 120 yards. Also three touchdowns. Tucker will send a man in motion from left to right. That's Jackson. Drops back, looks for Jackson on the right side. It'll be a catch right there at the 26-yard line, which will move the chains for the Warriors. Good tackle there from Lagarde. Nice play design there with the motion across and then the out route straight into it. They'll go tight bunch to the right side of the formation. A pitch out to the right side for Cossie. Cossie makes a cut, is hit hard at the 30-yard line. Pick up of a couple. Jennings comes in and Lagarde come in for the tackle. Second and seven. One high safety for the Eagles. That's Zach Andrews. Tucker drops back. Now he'll scramble up the middle. He'll look to run slides right there at the 35-yard line to bring up third and short. It's impressive for me that the Eagles' defense, most of their tackling comes from the secondary. Moffitt, Andrews, Bolton, all of which have double-digit tackles as safeties as that one's going to be run up the middle for a first down from Kossi. So the Warriors continue to move the chains. That's now two first downs on the drive. Soft coverage being played on the outside by the corners. 
Tucker drops back. He'll look to throw. Now scrambles out to the right. He'll make a toss out to the sideline. Looks like it'll be caught on the near side. That'll be Hayden Jackson on the reception. His eighth catch of the year. Moves the chains. Yeah, Tucker's doing a great job of getting outside in the pocket and finding his open receivers and really just creating for the Warriors here early. They'll look to the sideline to get the play call. Devin Fossilman, their offensive coordinator. One receiver out wide to the right, the tight end bunched in with the offensive lineman. The snap, now a play fake out to the right. It's going to be the same guy, Jackson, with it. He'll pick up a couple. Second and seven. Under 10 minutes to play here in the first quarter as the Warriors continue to move the ball well. Matchup number 85 between the two squads. Hines leads that matchup 55-27. A couple ties as well. Three receivers to the left side, one to the bottom of the screen. They'll look to the bottom of the screen. It's going to be tossed out to the running back, Evans. Evans will be tackled right at the 46-yard line. Third and medium coming up. It's just like the two teams. Another opportunity for the Eagles to try to get off the field here on third down. I mean, there may be more, there may be more. A couple different Eagles there for the tackle. Lagarde, one of them. Tucker has a running back to the left side. Third and four, the snap. He'll look to pass. Now scrambles out to the left side. He's got a man in the flats. It's open. And across the 40-yard line for a first down goes Hayden Jackson. Another instance where Tucker gets outside the pocket and finds another receiver for a Warriors first down. It was Bolton there for the tackle. Ball on the 35-yard line as the Warriors continue to drive. We saw it last week. Hines was bending, however, not breaking. Let's see if they can start to pick it up here a little bit defensively. Motion from right to left, and we'll see a penalty, a false start there on the left side of the offensive line. That's going to be Smith, the left guard, who's called for the false start. It'll push it back to first eight and 15. Press coverage being played on the opposite side, the top of your screen. Handoff up the middle. It's a run by Cossie. Cossie's going to pick up a few. It's going to be second and 11. There for the tackle, Brendan Jennings. Second and 11. A great opportunity for Hines to get off the field here. The false start on first down keeps him behind the chains. A small pickup there. Let's see what East Central draws up. Tucker will send a man in motion from left to right. He'll stop right there at the left tackle. The ball snapped. He drops back to throw. He'll throw a ball across the middle. It's up in the air and picked off by the Eagles. Interception by Kelby Holmes. That ball deflected about 20 feet in the air. Holmes able to come up with it. First down, Eagles. Six thirty-five left here in the first quarter. Hines will take back over. K. Barnett will lead the team back on the field. Could be just what the Eagles needed with that momentum right there. Early turnover in this game. Man, that defense has stepped up when they needed him. A handoff up the middle. It's Johnson. Johnson makes a cut and a nice little pickup on first down. Zaylon Johnson. Zaylon, who came in 21 yards on the year, may have already doubled that total tonight. Second and four now for the Eagles. Barnett takes the snap, looks to hand it off. It's Johnson again. That time he's stuffed at the line of scrimmage. About everybody in the front seven for the Warriors in on that tackle. Central. 
Sec third and four. Looks like the Warriors may look to bring some pressure up the middle. It was the linebacker, Graham, who snuck up. Barnett still looking over to the sideline to get the play call from Omar Connor, the quarterback coach. He's on the headset with Kelly Murphy, the offensive coordinator. Snap is taken by Barnett. Quick throw out to the right is incomplete. Looking for the tight end, Cam Williams. Yeah, it looked like the Warriors kind of bluffed that pressure, like they dropped back in that zone and, you know, gave them a little trouble there on that third down. It'll be fourth and four as the punt unit will come onto the field. So the interception leads to nothing offensively for Hines. Hollingsworth back to punt for the Eagles as Andrew Tate to snap it. Great snap. No pressure coming from the Warriors. It's going to be a high kick all the way back to the 34-yard line and a risky catch there from the return man. Corey and Wilson, the defensive back, was able to snag the punt in the air and the Warriors will take over on their own 34-yard line. Chris Tucker will lead his squad back out on the field after an interception on their first drive. Three receivers out wide to the left, and now they'll send a man in motion. The tight end will come in motion, now goes back to where he was. That's Howard. They'll hand it off to Cossie. Cossie up the middle and a big tackle there from Holmes after the interception. It'll be second and seven after a pickup of three from the running back. Clock will continue to roll as it's under five minutes to play in this first quarter. One safety high. The snap, now they look to hand it to Cassie again. Cassie is going to be tackled right there at the 40-yard line. Another big stop by the linebacker. That's Brendan Jennings. Jennings comes up with a big hit there. Yeah, the Eagles linebackers are really attacking the run, as you just saw there by Jennings and Holmes. They're coming up, crashing hard on those runs. Third and short here for the Warriors. Let's see if they stick to the ground game. Tucker takes a snap. They'll go play fake over the middle. It's going to be caught by their leading receiver, Jackson, in a first down. Moves the chains on a third down. Yeah, that was a nice little RPO read there by Tucker to get the first down there for the Warriors. It was Cheney who came up with the tackle. First and 10 Warriors from the 50-yard line. Another handoff up the middle. Chossie is tackled right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a pickup of half a yard. Second and long. Tucker, who's replacing Landon Sims, who the starting quarterback was through the first two weeks, now has thrown two interceptions on the season. You've seen his ability to do a little bit of everything. He's aired it out a little bit and also shown his legs early on in this one. A bunch formation to the right. He'll drop back, looks to throw out to the flats. It's going to be caught on the near side. Good enough for a first down. That's going to be T.J. Colum who has the reception. Colum was 79 yards before that reception. He had a one in week one for 75. First and 10 now for the Warriors as they continue to find a rhythm offensively. A good mixture of run, a good mixture of pass as this balanced attack continues to move the ball. Two receivers out wide to the left. The snap, now a handoff up the middle and a tackle from the back side. It was Moffitt who comes off that 
right side of the offensive line comes all the way across to make the tackle in the backfield. Hines goes a little switcheroo on the defensive line. Get some fresh guys in there. Empty formation now for the Warriors on second and nine. Two minutes to play here in the first quarter. Tucker takes the snap. He's going to pass over the middle. It's going to be caught by his tight end where he is just hammered over the middle by Harry. That's William Harry, the freshman linebacker. Him and Brendan Jennings were there for the tackle. Third and two. Two receivers to the left side along with the tight end. Now a handoff up the middle. It's going to be a first down as a gain of about seven or eight there from Tavion Evans. Yeah, like you said, the Warriors are definitely mixing it up on this offensive end. Run, pass, just it's been very balanced up to this point. A little bit of soft coverage as well is why the middle's been open. The linebackers are dropped in, dropped back as a man in motion from left to right. They're going to look to run out to the right. Now they're going to try to throw it back. They got a man over the middle. It's their tight end. He's going to dive in for the score. Ethan Howard, touchdown number four on the season. He has... Nine catches on the year and four of them for touchdowns. That makes it 6-0 East Central over Hines. From 24 yards out. Here comes Mangum. He's going to kick the PAT. 104 to play here in the first quarter is when the first score happens. The kick is up. The kick is good. And it's 7 0, Warriors lead. The extra point attempt is good by and it looks like Roman Mueller may get some snaps here on this next drive. He's been on the sideline making some throws with his helmet on. A nine play drive, 67 yards, four minutes and 12 seconds burned off. And it's capped off with an Ethan Howard touchdown. Back to receive for Hines on this kickoff. McCarty Johnson along with Jamonte Wallace. A couple guys that have... It'll be Trey Henderson. Excuse me, not McCarty Johnson. Johnson had been doing a lot of returning coming into this ball game. It will be Henderson along with Wallace. The kick is off. A low kick to the sideline. It'll bounce and be picked up at the five-yard line by Wallace. Wallace makes a cut and a big hit at the 25-yard line. And that's where the Eagles will take over. It was Gavin Freeman with the huge lick on the return. First and 10 from the 26-yard line. A 21-yard return. And here comes Cade Barnett. We thought it may be Mula. He was on the sideline throwing a little bit, but they're going to go back with Barnett here on drive number three. Two receivers out wide to the left, double tied into the right. It's Williams and Tucker, the tight ends. Now a handoff to the left side. It's Johnson. Johnson makes a cut, and another good cut all the way up to the 36-yard line. That's Zaylon, no, excuse me, Jamarian Johnson on the carry. That was a nice rebound, Johnson, right there. Nothing in the middle, so bounce it outside for another first down for the Eagles. Let's see if the Eagles can go fast. A big play. They need to try to continue that momentum and continue to go fast. Play's going to be signaled in. They continue with... Johnson in the backfield. Double tied into the left. It's still Williams and Tucker. Two receivers now out right to the white. Play fake. Screen out to the right side. It's Lott. Lott makes the man miss. Now he's on the outside where he's tackled just past the 40-yard line. A nice solid pickup there. Also great block by Jamonte Wallace on the outside there. Jamarian Johnson will stay in the backfield. Lott and Wallace will flop sides. They'll be on the bottom of the screen as the buzzer goes off for the end of the first quarter. It's 7-0 East Central over Hines. We'll take a break and be back with more Hines football. 
Fox Gourmet Seasoning. Visit the Heinz Meat Market in Porter Hall on the Raymond campus of Heinz Community College or give us a call at 601-857-3721. Hello. I wanted to tell you about a new spectator opportunity we have for this upcoming football season at Joe Renfro Stadium. We have created a new tailgate space on the southwest corner of the stadium where there used to be trees. We have tents available for those individuals that are interested in renting some tailgate space before the game and during the game. If you're interested, call us or email us for pricing and reserve your space now. Back on the field, it's going to be a handoff up the middle. Johnson, Johnson's going to push all the way forward to the 45-yard line, just short of that first down marker. Or will they give it to him? A close spot, and they're going to give it to him. First down for the Eagles. Yeah, great spot right there to move the chains for the Eagles to maybe, you know, continue this drive. Jamarian Johnson just kept his legs going, kept battling forward, able to pick up the first down. They'll look to give it to the hot hand. He's going to make a jump cut from right to left and pick up a few yards. Like we talked about in pregame, establishing the run is going to be very vital for this Eagles offense. Second and eight as they're going to go to a different back. This time it's going to be Jaden Reed, a bigger back, more physical back than the other two. Barnett. Takes the snap. He'll look to hand it off. Now he keeps it along the left side. He's got enough to pick up a couple yards before he goes down on a slide. A pickup of a four. Third and medium here for the Eagles. They'll stay with two tight ends, two receivers, Lott and Johnson. That's McCarty Johnson on the outside. They'll take the snap hand. It's to Reed. Reed, a big physical run. That time he's going to power himself. Bounces off a couple tacklers. Another first down for the Eagles. And also another second effort run there by the Eagles to move the chains. And that's another first down. The Eagle offense will look over to the sideline, gets the play call. They're going to stay with two tight ends. It's worked here on this drive. Barnett takes the snap. Now a handoff to Reed. Reed up the middle makes a cut to the right side. He's going to pick up about eight yards on the carry. The ball carry is, is Jaden Reed. Number 13, Holly on the tackle. Tackle by Bo Holly. It was Bo Holly who made the tackle. The defensive end. East Central not even ready for the snap. Reed makes another great cut and a physical run. Brings up another first down. That time on the tackle, number 15, it's Smith on the tackle who leads this defense in tackles. Yeah, I like the tempo the Eagles are trying to establish here on this offensive possession. And it looks like East Central will call a timeout because of the pace of play Hines is playing with. We'll take one with you and be back with more Hines football. I always wanted to be a nurse, so just being in nursing school and fulfilling that later in life, I'm older, I'm older. One of the older students, not that old, but I'm one of the older students. It was just time to do it. My kids are older. I put that on the back burner so I could raise them. Now it's time for me. So just being able to feel like welcome, like I can go to any classmate, even people that I don't know are always willing to help. And you just don't find that everywhere. I think the biggest reason that I would choose Hans would be the relationships that you have with your peers. For baseball guys, we stay in the dorm. All of us are together on the second floor. So kind of having that camaraderie really brings us together. Most days we're spending three, four, and then when we play games, we're spending six, seven, eight hours together. The close friendships that you make. It looks like the Eagles will get another free play. Guys jump off sides. Barnett scrambles out to the right. He's going to look to throw, and he's going to throw it out of bounds. His receiver, intended receiver on the outside there, was Keys, Dalton Keys. He slipped and fell. And it's going to be an offsides on East Central. 
So five yard pickup here for the Eagles on first down will remain first down and a little bit more manageable. Now we're going to have a talk here between the officials around the 32-yard line. Let's see what the final call is here from the white hat. He's going to continue to discuss it. Let's see what the, what the call is here. One of the defensive players for East Central not happy with whatever the call is. I want to say they threw another flag, possibly a late hit on Barnett at the end of the play. There's going to be two fouls on the play. Offsides on East Central. That's going to be five yards. Continues to be first down. Unsportsmanlike on the defense. And it's going to be an automatic first down, half the distance to the goal line, and Hines is moving the chains. Wallen to Max Wallen to the linebacker, comes up with the late hit. That moves the ball all the way inside the red zone for the first time tonight for the Eagles. 12-26 here in the second quarter. Running back to the right. A handoff to Johnson. Johnson up the middle. A powerful run. A good push from that offensive line. Excuse me, that's Jaden Reed on the run. Reed's going to pick up about six yards on the carry. Jones comes in with a tackle. Hines continues to go fast. Two tight ends to the right. Reed, another physical carry. That time he's going to be stopped for a short gain. And now they're going to go to a different back. Zaylon Johnson comes back in as Reed's going to take a break. Couple physical runs there from Jaden Reed with their leading rusher, Jarrell Boyd, out. Two receivers out wide to the right. And it looks like there may be a false start. It is. That's going to be on Lot. That's Lot's second false start penalty as a receiver. Yeah, just getting ambitious there. Pre snap penalty there. Just shoot yourself in the foot offensively here. That's going to move it back to make it third and nine. They'll bring tight ends off and two receivers in. It's going to be lot wide out to the right. McCarty Johnson in the middle between Jamar Grace and the slot. The snap, third and nine. Barnett's going to look to throw. It's a tunnel screen to Johnson. Johnson's having his at the five. He's inside the five all the way down to the two-yard line. A big pickup there. It's going to move the chains first and goal. A good move on the outside there from McCarty Johnson just to find a way to get up the middle. I think if he maybe makes a cut to the right side, he may get in, but goes straight forward. They're going to throw it again. In the back of the end zone, it's going to be a touchdown, Eagles. Michael Lott, his first touchdown catch of the season. Wide open in the far side end zone. Lott tries to tie things up. 7-6 ball game. The Eagles respond here in the second quarter. Hollingsworth on to attempt the PAT. Looking to tie things up here at seven. Derek Davis late to get on the field on the field goal unit. Colin Cox to hold. The snap holds down. Kicks up. Kick is good. We're tied at seven. A 7-7 ball game after a quarter and a couple minutes. A 12-play drive for the Eagles gets it done. Michael Lott found wide open in quarantine. Like you said, pregame, just how, how are the Eagles going to respond to adversity, and they did just that by responding with seven of their own here on the offensive end. An impressive drive led by the rushing attack. Johnson, Reed, they show some tough runs. Yards, 
And here comes the Eagles to kick it off. Hollingsworth will do the kicking. He'll kick from left to right on the screen. Collingsworth will step it off. Ten yards deep, a couple steps off to his left. He checks with his guys to the left, to the right. Now he's ready for kickoff. It's going to be kicked out to the right side. The return out from the one-yard line. A tough return and a big hit on the return. William Harry, the linebacker, comes up with another big hit in special teams. It'll bring up first and 10 from inside the 20-yard line. Not great field position for East Central. Yeah, nice play right there by Harry to get down the field and just really find the ball there to make the tackle. The Warrior offense will trot back onto the field after a score on their last drive. Chase Tucker still under center for the Warriors who replaced Landon Sims last week after an injury. Run up the middle. However, it's going to be whistle blown. False start. It's going to push back the Warriors first and 15. Looks like Coach Williams has his whole defensive squad off to the side. And an official will finally come in and break it off. Somehow he was able to huddle all up right in between the plays. Yeah, almost got a little free time out there. First and 15 from the 11-yard line. An empty formation now for the Warriors. This is where you have to watch out for Tucker to run. Tucker takes a snap, throws it over the middle to the left side. He's got a man open all the way out to the 30-yard line. It's going to be Hayden Jackson. Jackson just on a slant route from the slot on the inside left side. And he's going to have a huge pickup. All the way up to the 29-yard line. So they get out of their own 11-yard line and move the ball on the first play of the drive. Man in motion. Now the handoff up the middle. And it's going to be a big tackle in the backfield. That tackle made from Carl Odrick, the defensive lineman, breaks through in the backfield. That'll be his... Eighth tackle of the year. A four-man front here, a 4-2-5 for this Hines defense. The tight end tight to the left side, Ethan Howard, who scored the touchdown for the Warriors early on. Tucker chased out to his left. He'll scramble, makes a run, a flag in the backfield. will probably bring it back as Tucker runs out of bounds at the 41-yard line. It's going to come back. The White Hat's already pointing to the offensive side. Looks like it's likely to be a holding call. Let's see who it's on. That's going to be on number 54, Drake Pond. The left tackle from Pass Christian. He's a sophomore, veteran on the offensive line for East Central. It's going to make it second and a mile from the 16-yard line, second and 23 officially. Another empty formation. This is where East Central has been dangerous. What's Tucker going to do? Three receivers out wide to the left side, two to the right. He takes the snap, looks to the left. He's got a man on an out route. It's going to be caught. He makes a move and makes the defender miss, and three guys there for a big hit, but it's going to be Brendan Jennings who comes up with the tackle. It's Armstrong there with the catch before he just gets lit up. Yeah, the Eagles definitely swarmed the ball there once the catch was made to put themselves in a good position here on this third down. Third and long. Can the Eagles get off the field here? Running back to the left of Tucker. Three receivers out wide right. 
They'll send one in motion. That's going to be their tight end. Drops back, now steps up. He's got a little running room. Not enough for a first down. He's tackled at the 35. A good pick up there from the quarterback. However, it's still going to be short. Will they keep the offense on the field? It looks like not. They'll send in the punt team. It was going to be about fourth and five inside their own 35-yard line. They're going to punt. Cheney back to return. Cox back to punt. He's averaging 46 yards a punt. 60s is long. Catches a snap. Almost a block there. They may have got a finger on it. It's going to bounce inside the 40 all the way down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. That's where Hines' offense will take over. With 7-10 to play here in the first half, it's a 7-7 ball game. Big opportunity for this Hines offense here to try to, you know, take the lead here going into the half. Barnett's found a little rhythm with his offense here in this game number three. Hines still looking for win one of the season. They'll go two tight ends tight to the right side, two receivers wide to the left. The snap, now the handoff up the middle. A nice run there from Johnson, Jamarian Johnson on the carry. It was Parker on the stop, but not before a gain of seven for the Eagles. Hines continues to stay with two tight ends. Offensive coordinator Kelly Murphy may be getting in a little bit of a rhythm himself. Play fake. Now they're going to look deep. They're going to throw it out of bounds. They were trying to fake a screen underneath. It was Pollard in the flat, trying to find Lot down the field, and it's going to have to be thrown out of bounds. Third and three. I do like the play call there. That was just better discipline right there by the Warriors' defense. Here comes the third down play, the snap. Now the handoff. Johnson makes a cut and will be tackled after a gain of two. And will they send out the punting unit? They will. Coach Williams will gather them on the sideline. Fourth and one. It'll be Hollingsworth back to punt. I think they're missing somebody on the line. They're going to have to send a tight end out. Five seconds on the play clock. Likely Hines will burn one here, and they will. Hines has to call their first time out of the half just before the snap as that play clock was getting low. We'll take a break with them and be back with more Hines football. I was born in India, and I, uh, I moved to the USA in 2015. I picked up tennis in 10th grade and I didn't even know what tennis was. Started picking it up, got better, and then now I'm here with a scholarship for tennis. Fall semester was, was one of the, the best four or five months I've had in, in a while. I've, I've met a lot of new people. I don't wish that I went to a four-year college. I just felt like a home. The punt unit back on for Hines with 5.38 remaining here in the second quarter. A 7-7 tie ball game. Hollingsworth back to punt. Wilson to return for East Central. Andrew Tate will grab the ball and look to snap it. It's a good one, straight into the numbers. The punt's off. It'll be caught at the 30-yard line, fair caught. And that's where the Warriors will take over. That's a five, 30, 
And so that's where East Central will take over. Here comes Chris Tucker and company. First and ten. A bunch formation here for East Central. One receiver out wide to the right side. They'll look to hand it off. They do, and it's going to be tackled immediately. Kazi on the carry. It's going to be Woods on the tackle there. A tackle for loss. Second one of the season for Woods. Second and 12 upcoming. Let's see where East Central goes here. Behind the sticks on second down. Likely a passing play. Here's Tucker. He looks back out to the right side incomplete. And tended receiver Hayden Jackson. Yeah, it looked like they're trying to run a little curl route, maybe even a comeback route, just couldn't get it to go there. And a fresh set of legs here on the defensive line for the Eagles. It's, it's third and 13 from the 29-yard line. Fourteen on the play clock. Looks like Hines will go man to man on the outside. Tucker's throw over the middle, incomplete, and it's going to be a three and out for the offense. Man, this defense has been good, not just tonight, but in all three weeks so far. Yeah, definitely been consistent, like you said, in the run game and in the pass game, and also the clock has stopped here to give the offense just enough time to try to score here at the end of the half. McCarty Johnson will be back to receive for Hines. We've seen a couple guys back to receive in the punt team. It was Cheney last time, and here's Johnson. Johnson can be explosive in the special teams game. Here's the punt off to the right side. A flag here as it looks like they're going to say Hines. No, it's going to be a flag. They hit Johnson before he was even able to try to make the catch. Wasn't even able to get to the ball, but we have now two penalty flags on the field. One at the 25-yard line, one back at the 40. We'll see what the flags are for here. The officials will talk about it. White Hat will come out at about the 40-yard line. And I believe both of them will be on East Central. Yes, both of them will be on East Central. A false start to start the play. That penalty will be declined. And a kick catch interference on the punt return. That's going to be a 15-yard penalty. And it sets up Hines inside East Central's 50-yard line. Excellent field position to start this drive off as well for the Eagles. Let's see if they can find their rhythm yet again offensively. They struggled on the previous drive. Lot wide out to the right side. Hand off up the middle. A gain of maybe one yard, if not just stopped at the line of scrimmage. It was Zaylen Johnson on the carry. They're going to say no yards there for him as now Jamarian Johnson will come into the ball game. He's been the second back all year for Hines behind Jarrell Boyd. Boyd out tonight. Johnson's getting much more action. Jamar Grace in the game. He had six catches in week one. Hasn't had one since. Two receivers out to the right. The snap. Now a handoff up the middle. And Jamarian Johnson hit right at the line of scrimmage. And so it'll be third and ten. The running game looks like it's disappeared a bit here in the second quarter. Yeah, the Warriors getting a big push these last two plays here to try to, you know, stop the run. They'll go four wide receivers, takes the two tight ends off the field. Three out to the right, one to the left. Running back to the right of Barnett. Barnett tonight, three of seven for 17 yards through the air. His long touchdown pass 
of nine yards. He drops back. He's under trouble. Scrambles out to the right side, throws the ball up, throws the ball out of bounds, and it'll be another three and out for the Hines offense. Just didn't find the rhythm there on that drive and a short-lived one. They had had some rhythm early in the game, and they found some things that were working. Seems like they may have just gone away from them a bit. And it'll be the fourth time out for the punter, Tanner Hollingsworth. He's averaging 35.7 yards per punt as long as 42. He's got one inside the 20, an opportunity for a second here. The punt will be off from the 45-yard line, a Spiral punt off to the left side, and a flag is thrown in the backfield. I believe it might be on Hines. They're running off the field like it may have been on them. So it's going to be a Hines first down after the 15-yard penalty. The penalty was called there on number 45, Jaquavian Carter. I believe they said he leaped over the top mm -hmm. and called a flag there for a 15-yard penalty. So the offense will be back on the field after a three and out. First and 10 from the 30-yard line. Huge break there for the Eagles to try to in this half with a touchdown or a field goal to go into the locker room. Barnett takes a snap, now looks to hand it off. He does, a nice cut out on the outside by Jamarian Johnson and a pickup of a couple. Jamarian Johnson on the carry for the Eagles. To the 28-yard line. Jaden Beal on the tackle. Oh, yeah. It is Jaden Beal, the defensive lineman, who comes up with the tackle, the Terry High School graduate. Second and seven from the 27-yard line. 2.30 to play here in the second quarter. Tie ball game at seven. Barnett looks to take the snap. He does. Now a play action. He drops back. He's under pressure. Scrambles to the left side. He's going to look out to the left side, and he had a man in the area, but luckily gets it away. The most important thing was him getting it away. The second most important thing was having a guy in the area and luckily knowing the route pattern. He knew Jamarian Johnson would be along the left sideline. The tight end will come off. That's Williams, and now they'll send out another receiver. Four receivers set for the Eagles. Three to the right, one to the left. Barnett likely in a passing drive here. A man jumps off sides. They have a chance to take one over the middle. They do. It's going to be caught by Wallace. Wallace all the way inside the 10-yard line. Jamonte Wallace. A first down Eagles, and the penalty will be declined on the offsides. The Eagles knocking on the door. Can they put it in? First and goal, just inside the 10-yard line. Three receivers out wide right. They're going to bring a blitz, a toss out to the right side. It's Johnson who will be tackled for a loss. Jamar Grace unable to get a block on the corner there. Yeah, it looked like they tried to set up a little wide receiver screen. They've ran a couple times, just missed the block. East Central did a good job of defending it. Jackson Parker who makes the tackle. Back to the 12-yard line. First and goal. Or excuse me, second and goal. Two receivers, both sides. Barnett drops back. They'll go tunnel screen again. This is Johnson. Johnson makes a man miss, tries to spin, and will get inside the 10. However, there's going to be a little laundry on the field. Looks like it may be on Hines here. It may push him back to second and forever. An eligible man downfield. It looked like McCarty Johnson caught that one past the line of scrimmage, which now forces Hines a second and goal from about the 17-yard line. That 
will push the Eagles back five yards, and it'll be second and goal from the 17. Likely to draw up another pass play here. I mean, the screen has worked down inside the red zone, especially when you have a guy like McCarty Johnson who can make a man miss. The clock will roll. We're under a minute and 20 seconds to play here in the half. Three receivers out to the left, one to the bottom of the screen is Pollard. A hard count, now they'll look to the sideline. He'll talk to his offensive line, gets back set five yards behind the center. He takes the snap, a low snap, looks out to the left. He'll step up, he looks to scramble. He pumps, now he'll run inside the 10. No, he's going to be tackled at the 10. He tried to get the defender up in the air as 22, Donnie Smith comes in for the tackle. So third and goal from the 10. Nonetheless, as long as you don't turn it over on this play, you're likely to get on the board. Also need to be aware of the clock. It is ticking 30 seconds now. They do still have a couple timeouts left. You need to get a play off before about 15 seconds. Barnett, he takes a snap, drops back. He's going to step up in the pocket. Scrambling out to the left. Now he's going to go down just inside the 10 yard line and a timeout will likely be called from Hines here as the clock is under 10 seconds. They will stop the clock with eight seconds left. And the field goal unit will come out to try to take the lead. And Barnett is limping off the field. Not a good sign for the Hines offense as he's been in a groove here early in this first half. And then JK, you can go back to the zoom shot now. So Hines takes the timeout with eight seconds left, and it'll be Hollingsworth out to kick the PA, excuse me, the field goal. He was one of one last week and is only chance to score. Offensively this season for Hines, they just have 437 total yards. Tonight they're looking to move the ball well, and it's also been the defense setting them up in great field position. Yeah, the defense has done a stellar job here in this first half, and you'd like to see it continue and be, just be true and consistent in the second half. The punter, Colin Cox, will be out to hold for Hollingsworth. Hollingsworth takes his three steps back, his two steps to the left. Andrew Tate to hold. The white hat will blow the whistle. Eight seconds to play. The line gets down. Tate throws it between the legs. Snap down, hold down. Kick is up, kick is good. And Hines leads it 10 to 7 here with four seconds remaining in the half. Hollingsworth has had himself a good week last week in the punt game. Also knocked down his one field goal attempt. And now tonight... He's doing it all in the kicking game. Hollingsworth to kick off now after knocking through the three points. The return crew for East Central will head out to the field. Hollingsworth to kick off. Evans back to return the running back for East Central. It's Jordan as well back to receive. Hollingsworth kick. It will be to Evans along the left side. He'll catch it at the three-yard line. He'll bring it out to the 20. Tries to make a man miss. He can't. The buzzer goes off. Hines makes a good tackle before the half. And the halftime score, 10-7 to after Hines scores with under a minute to play on a field goal. The offense for Hines is starting to look a little bit better here in week three. They needed something to go their way. They found a man wide open, Michael Lott, for the touchdown catch to start the half. And then the field goal here to end the half. And the final, or excuse me, the score at halftime, 10-7. to We'll take a break and be back with more Heinz football.
Elite Physical Therapy wishes all the players a healthy and successful football championship season. Elite is proud to serve the local communities with multiple locations, providing secure outpatient therapy and sports medicine services. Our centers specialize in post-op rehabilitation, manual therapy, concussion management, and orthopedics, providing patients convenient scheduling and access to care within 24 hours. If you suffer from an injury, visit MyElitePT.com to find a center near you. That's MyElitePT.com. Elite Physical Therapy, proud to serve the state of Mississippi. For more than 40 years, the Heinz Meat Market has provided select choice and prime meats to our local community. Pick up some ribeye steaks hand-cut by students at our meat merchandising program or Heine Ho Smoke Sausage you can only find here. The market offers beef, pork, chicken, and catfish. We also carry sides, desserts, and Doc's Gourmet Seasoning. Visit the Heinz Meat Market in Porter Hall on the Raymond campus of Heinz Community College or give us a call at 601-857-3721. Hello. I wanted to tell you about a new spectator opportunity we have for this upcoming football season at Joe Renfro Stadium. We have created a new tailgate space on the southwest corner of the stadium where there used to be trees. We have tents available for those individuals that are interested in renting some tailgate space before the game and during the game. If you're interested, call us or email us for pricing and reserve your space now. I always wanted to be a nurse, so just being in nursing school and fulfilling that later in life. I'm older. I'm one of the older students, not that old, but I'm one of the older students. It was just time to do it. My kids are older. I put that on the back burner so I could raise them. Now it's time for me. So just being able to feel, like, welcomed, like I can go to any class. Even people that I don't know are always willing to help, and you just don't find that everywhere. I think the biggest reason that I would choose Heinz would be the relationships that you have with your peers. For baseball guys, we stay in the dorm. All of us are together on the second floor. So kind of having that camaraderie really brings us together. Most days we're spending three, four, and then when we play games, we're spending six, seven, eight hours together. The close friendships that you make, I think has definitely made an impact on me. And I, yeah, I'm very thankful.
I think the biggest reason that I would choose Heinz would be the relationships that you have with your peers. For baseball guys, we stay in the dorm. All of us are together on the second floor. So kind of having that camaraderie really brings us together. Most days we're spending three, four, and then when we play games, we're spending six, seven, eight hours together. The close friendships that you make, I think it's definitely made an impact on me. And I, yeah, I'm very thankful. I was born in India and I, uh, I moved to the USA in 2015. I picked up tennis in 10th grade and I didn't even know what tennis was. Started picking it up, got better, and then now I'm here with a scholarship for tennis. Fall semester was, was one of the, the best four or five months I've had in, in a while. I've, I've met a lot of new people. I don't wish that I went to a four-year college. I just felt like a home. I wanted to go into nursing because I really enjoy helping people. I love everything about nursing and I initially wanted to do this years ago so I'm actually coming back to you know fulfill a career that I'm really passionate about. Heinz is absolutely wonderful. Your teachers are passionate and you can tell they love what they do and it really makes everything just come together and enjoyable. Elite Physical Therapy wishes all the players a healthy and successful football championship season. Elite is proud to serve the local communities with multiple locations, providing secure outpatient therapy and sports medicine services. Our centers specialize in post-op rehabilitation, manual therapy, concussion management, and orthopedics, providing patients convenient scheduling and access to care within 24 hours. If you suffer from an injury, visit MyElitePT.com to find a center near you. That's MyElitePT.com. Elite Physical Therapy, proud to serve the state of Mississippi. And we welcome everyone back to Joe Renfro Stadium where Hines leads East Central by the score of 10 to 7. Going over the stat, going over the scoring summary at the 104 mark of the first quarter, East Central gets on the board first with a Chris Tucker 24-yard touchdown pass to Ethan Howard and it capped a 9-play 67-yard drive that took 412 off the clock. K Magnum's PAT is good. East Central led 7 to nothing. There were 10.34 left in the second quarter. For Hines, Kate Barnett threw a 3-yard touchdown pass to Michael Lott, and it capped a 12-play 74-yard drive that took 5.5 minutes off the clock. Tanner Hollingsworth's PAT was good, and the score was tied at 7. Then with 4 seconds left in, in the second quarter, Hollingsworth kicked a 25-yard field goal, and it capped a 10-play 38-yard drive that took 434 off the clock. That's where we stand at the half. Hines 10, East Central 7. First downs, Hines had 9, East Central also had 9. Total rushing, Hines ran the football 22 times for 87 yards. East Central ran 12 times for 38. In terms of passing, Hines was 5 of 11 for 32 yards and 1 touchdown. East Central was 12 of 16 for 114 yards with one touchdown and one interception. Total offense, the Eagles have 33 plays for 119 yards. The Warriors have 28 plays for 152 yards. In terms of punts, the Eagles punted three times for an average of 36 yards a punt. The Warriors punted twice for an average of 35 yards a punt. Hines had four penalties for 20 yards. East Central was flagged eight times for 75 Time of possession, the Eagles had the football for 15 minutes and 41 seconds. The Warriors had the football for 14-19. As we look at individual stats for the Warriors, Chris Tucker ha have had um, uh, two carries for 17 yards. Devontae Causey, it carries for 17. Tavian Edwards, one carry for six. And Dalen Patton, one carry for minus two. 12 carries, 38 yards for the Warriors. For the Eagles, Jamarian Johnson has seven carries for 30 yards. Jaden Reed, five for 23. Kate Barnett, four for 21. Zaylin Johnson, five for 12. And Roman Mula, one carry for one yard. 22 carries, 87 yards for the Eagles. For East Central, Tucker was 12 of 16 for 114 yards with one touchdown and one, one interception. Hines, Kate Bar Barnett was five of 11 for 32 yards and one touchdown. In terms of receiving for East Central, Hayden Jackson was 6 for 58. 
Ethan Howard, two for 29 with one touchdown. T.J. Cullen, one for 11. Preston Lynch, one for seven. Lawrence Armstrong, one for six. And Tavian Edwards, one for three. For the Eagles, Jamonte Wallace, one catch for 18 yards. Michael Law, two carries for eight yards and the one touchdown. And McCarty Johnson, two receptions for six yards. Kobe Holmes has the one interception. Jackson Parker leads the way for the Warriors with eight tackles. For Hines, Devin LaGuard had three solo and three assists. And William Heron... Henry had three solo and one assist. And as we take a look around the league, as we reload the scoreboard, it, Oklahoma leads Delta 13-7 to with 19 seconds left in the second quarter. It is 14-6, Itawamba over Northeast at halftime. Holmes leads East Mississippi 7-6 with 10 minutes left in the first quarter. And this is the, the surprise score, Southwest 20 Gulf Coast 7 with 11 minutes left in the second quarter. Northwest leads Pearl River 10 to nothing with 11 minutes left in the second quarter. And Jones all over Colin 28 to 3 with 9 minutes left in the second quarter. Those are For more than 40 years, the Heinz Meat Market has provided select choice and prime meats to our local community. Pick up some ribeye steaks hand-cut by students at our meat merchandising program or Heine Ho smoke sausages you can only find here. The market offers beef, pork, chicken, and catfish. We also carry sides, desserts, and Doc's Gourmet Seasoning. Visit the Heinz Meat Market in Porter Hall on the Raymond campus of Heinz Community College or give us a call at 601-857-3721. Hello. I wanted to tell you about a new spectator opportunity we have for this upcoming football season at Joe Renfro Stadium. We have created a new tailgate space on the southwest corner of the stadium where there used to be trees. We have tents available for those individuals that are interested in renting some tailgate space before the game and during the game. If you're interested, call us or email us for pricing and reserve your space now. I always wanted to be a nurse, so just being in nursing school and fulfilling that later in life, I'm older, I'm one of the older students, not that old, but I'm one of the older students. It was just time to do it. My kids are older. I put that on the back burner so I could raise them. Now it's time for me. So just being able to feel like welcome, like I can go to any classmate, even people that I don't know are always willing to help, and you just don't find that everywhere. I think the biggest reason that I would choose Heinz would be the relationships that you have with your peers. For baseball guys, we stay in the dorm. All of us are together on the second floor. So kind of having that camaraderie really brings us together. Most days we're spending three, four, and then when we play games, we're spending six, seven, eight hours together. The close friendships that you make, I think has definitely made an impact on me. And I, yeah, I'm very thankful. We're live here from Gene Murphy Field at Joe Renfro Stadium as Hines leads it 10-7 after one half. The news here offensively for Hines, Cade Barnett will be out in the second half with a leg lower body issue. We're assuming leg. He's on the sideline, so likely we'll see Roman Mueller take some snaps. Maybe Jordan Batie as well, who took an entire drive last week at Northwest. Nonetheless, Tanner Hollingsworth, He's set to kick it off from the 35-yard line. He'll kick left to right as East Central will start with the football in this third quarter. The kick's off and will be cut at about the 9-yard line. The return out to the right. A good cut and now a broken tackle on the right side all the way across the 25-yard line goes the returner. It was Jeremy Evans who makes the tackle. That ball is going to be returned out to the 28, 27-yard line area. 
It was a 19-yard return. And here comes the quarterback, Chris Tucker. He'll line up with a running back to his left side. They'll move everybody over, shift the tight ends from left to right, now takes a snap, a toss out to the right side, and it's going to be a penalty flag. Possibly a false start. I don't believe the tight ends got set there. Yeah, maybe one did, but both. It looked like it was a little shaky there on that possession. We'll see what the White Hat says. It's going to be. White Hat steps up about the 15-yard line. They're going to say a delay of game. It was a delay of game. So they tried to go fast. That's why they snapped it so quick. But it's going to push back East Central five yards. That's going to be penalty number nine now against the Warriors. If we look at the halftime stats, like Stephen was mentioning, the Warriors lead in total yards over Hines, 152 to 119. Another toss out to the right and a tackle made on the outside. That's Moffitt who comes down from the safety position for a tackle for loss. Moffitt has been everywhere along with this safety group. Like I mentioned, three of the safeties – uh, that play a lot of snaps, Moffitt, Andrews, Bolton, all double digits in tackles after two weeks. And then Jeremy Evans has nine after the two weeks. A loss of five. It's going to be second and 18. Tucker will send his tight end from right to left. Takes the snap, play action, dumps it off to the right side. A oh, tackle is broken on the far sideline before he shoved out of bounds for a gain of about five or six yards. It looked like they tried to set up the screen there for the second and long now, third and long here to try to get the Hines defense off here in this third quarter. And it's going to be third and 13-12. Tucker looking to pass. He drops back, looks to his left side. He's got a man out in the flats, and it's going to be a diving catch. What a grab it was from the receiver on the near side. That's going to be a great catch from Armstrong, the Houston, Texas native, graduate of Shadow Creek High School in Texas. It's going to be fourth down, however. A better ball, and he has a chance to pick up that first down, but just what a catch it was out laying out parallel to the ground. Yeah, and also that's just a long throw. Those out routes they've been running consistently all night. Cheney back to return in the punt game. As Cox is back to punt. The punt is off. It's a good one. A spiral that will turn over at about the 24-yard line. Cheney a gain of about five before he's brought down up to the 34-yard line. That was Cox's third punt of the night. That'll be his longest. He's averaging 34 and a half yards on the punts. As the offense will take the field under new quarterback Roman Mueller. As it will be first and 10 at the 34 yard line. Mueller takes the snap, looks to hand it off. He does, up the middle, tackled in the backfield. It was Graham who comes up with a tackle on Jamarian Johnson. A loss of two. Now a pistol formation for Hines. Mueller takes the snap, tries to hand it off. He fumbles it. It's going to be picked up by East Central on the 20-yard line. A turnover there from Hines. Miscommunication from Mula and Johnson. It's going to be picked up by the linebacker. It was Jackson Parker. So a turnover on drive number one of the second half. It will give East Central great field position and a chance as they're already knocking on the door.
Three tight ends, excuse me, three receivers tight to the right. Now a little formation shift. They're going to go to the left. The snap, a fake toss. Now the roll out to the right for Tucker. Tucker tries to do- drop it off in the flats. Incomplete pass. Chris Tucker's pass is incomplete. There was pressure coming from the linebacker crew. That was Ellis, excuse me, the defense alignment. Was able to get into the backfield. Tucker with a running back to his left. He takes the snap. Little pressure coming from the left side. Now he's going to scramble out to the right. He's across the yard marker. Throws one up into the end zone. It's incomplete. Good coverage on the outside. That's Cheney on a one-on-one coverage with his receiver. Yeah, nice coverage right there by Cheney. Running step for step for the receiver. Let's see if they throw the penalty flag. It looked like he was across the line of scrimmage. It was definitely a close call. And it looks like no penalty flag will be thrown on that. It looked like he was a yard or two past it. So it'll be third and ten from the 21-yard line. Likely another passing down for East Central. Running back to the right of Tucker. Takes the snap, looks out to the right. It's in the flats, incomplete pass. So... A three and out now for East Central. Will they throw the kicking unit out there? The offense will trot off. The kicking team will come back on. Mangum, who was one of two last week, will come on trying to kick the 38-yarder. Kicking team all the way on. Let's see if Hines tries to bring up some pressure off the outside. The snap holds down. Kick is up. It's a sideways spinner, and it's straight through the middle. 10-10, tie ball game. So it was a short drive, a three-play drive, where they were unable to gain a yard, however, put three points on the scoreboard. It's almost a win if you're the Heinz defense. They're getting put in that position, you know, back in the red zone, and they hold them to three. Let's see who they send out to return. It looks like they're going to send Trey Henderson along with McCarty Johnson. No, that's going to be Jamonte Wallace. They're going to be back to return for the Eagles. The Eagles will have four guys on the 50, a couple guys paired up on the – Excuse me, on the 45, and then a couple guys paired up on the 40, the opposite 40. One in the middle on the 30. A couple guys on the 20, and then your two deep returners, Wallace and Henderson. The kick is off. They'll kick it to the left side. Wallace fields it at the goal line. He's going to bring it out all the way to the 20. He's got a gap all the way up to the 35, up to the 40. What a return for Wallace to set up the offense in good field position. I was able to when I was able to talk to Coach Williams about the return game, they've been so close to breaking one free. Right there, you see a good return out to the 39-yard line where Hines is offense and Roman Mueller will take over. Just when Barnett was finding some footing, he goes down. It's gotta gotta be a killer. Yeah, definitely an unfortunate circumstance. It'll be Reed in the backfield alongside Mueller. He takes the snap, looks to hand it off. A good cut all the way up to the 44-yard line. Reed just such a powerful back. It'll be second and six. Another handoff to Reed. He's going to be hit immediately. He spins out of it. Second contact effort. He's all the way up to the 45-yard line. Gain of a couple. Third and five. They'll send some receivers out there. Mueller likely in a passing down here. 
what he's known for. He'll take the third down snap. No, he looks over to the sideline on the hard count. Three receivers out wide to the left, one to the bottom of the screen. It's Wallace one-on-one with his defensive back. Wilson will now step up to Wallace, looks to drop back. They're going to go zone. Third and four. Mueller tries to scramble up the middle. He's going to be hit and a sack for East Central. The offense was moving early in this ball game, and they've just been shut down here as it's continued. It'll bring out the punting unit. Here comes Hollingsworth. He's going to be out for his sixth punt of the night. Excuse me, fourth punt of the night. The snap, the kick is off. It's going to be a low line drive to the left side. It bounces at the 20. The return man will let it stay there, and it will be downed at the 21-yard line. Not much of a bounce on that punt right there. Yeah, it completely just died there to not really roll any extra yardage. And the Heinz defense will continue to be back on the field. They've just done such a wonderful job with their backs against the wall this year. Time of possession favors East Central. Well, Hines had 114 total yards at halftime. They're now down to 108. They've lost yardage here in the second half. Tucker with a running back to his left. He'll hand it to him off the edge. It's going to be a tackle. No, he spins out of it all the way up past the 30-yard line. It looked like he was going to get hit back by the line of scrimmage. It looks like it's going to be just enough for a first down. Chaney comes up with the tackle. It was Cossie on the run. Cossie will be to the left of Tucker. They look to hand it off to him on the right side. He's going to be wrapped up and tackled. A good tackle there at the line of scrimmage from Moffitt, who has just been everywhere defensively. Just seems like when you need a big play defensively, a one-on-one situation, Moffitt's the safety that comes down to make the play. Yeah, he's definitely been flying around the ball here tonight. He is that fifth defensive back. Plays a little bit like an outside backer. The snap handoff again off the right side. He's going to try to get the edge. Spins off a little bit of a tackle before he goes down at about the 40-yard line. Moffitt comes down again on another big tackle. It'll be third and four from the 40-yard line. Can the Eagles get off the field here? The offenses have just stopped. Two receivers out to the left. The official will come in. Ball snapped. Now throws it to the left side. They're going to they're going to call that play dead. It looked like one of the officials was running in to stop the play before it happened. However, the ball was still snapped. So what it was was East Central was going too fast. Didn't allow Hines to get subs into the ball game. So they blow the play dead. What would have been a first down for East Central, they're going to have to do it again. Five, excuse me, 8.05 remaining here in the third quarter. Some of the scoreboard lights are out. However, you don't have to worry about it. 5 a.m. tomorrow morning, that scoreboard is coming down. The Jumbotron's going up, and it'll be up for the next home game. The snap looks to the right. Tucker's got a man open on the sideline. A big hit by Chaney. However, it's not in time before East Central picks up another first down. Yeah, the Eagles drop back into that soft zone coverage, and Tucker kind of snipped that out and got the first down here for the Warriors. Next Thursday, it will be Hines at Pearl River, followed by Jones. And then when Hines is back at home against Southwest is when we'll preview that jumbo board for the first time this year. Flag comes out, and it's going to be a false start. Didn't see who moved there. They're going to get it on the offensive lineman. 
Maurice Evans is called for the false start, the right tackle. First and 15 from the 42. Couple of receivers out wide to the right. The leading receiver, Ethan Howard, will be tied in right next to the right tackle. Running back to the right, play fake. They look to drop it off to that tight end. In the flats, they do. A pickup of a couple before he's brought down at the 45-yard line. And it looks like it was Moffitt again on the tackle. Yeah, he's been everywhere tonight in the run game, the pass game. He's really been aggressive here in this game. Moffitt leads the team in tackles tonight. That's his eighth tackle. The snap, Tucker looks to throw to the right side. Now steps up under pressure. He's going to be brought down for a sack. A loss of about two yards there. Third and long. It was Chaney that time on the sack, coming from the cornerback position. Also nice play to not let him get it too far outside the pocket to where he could try to create something for the offense. Third and 13 upcoming. Trips out to the left side. Ethan Howard in the slot, the leading receiver. He's going to run a route over the middle. Tucker steps up. He has a man underneath on a shallow route. He's going to be tackled at the 48-yard line. Not enough for a first down. It was Harden with the catch there. He's going to be stopped short, and it looks like he's central. will send their punting unit out, trying to pin Hines deep. With McCarty Johnson back to receive. He'll stand on the 15-yard line. Cox out to punt. The snap's a good one. Punts off. A wobbly one that will bounce at the 20-yard line and take an East Central bounce inside the 10. And right at the 9-yard line is where the ball will be spotted. What a punt there from Cox, spinning the Heinz offense deep. Five minutes and ten seconds to play here in the third quarter. 10-10 ball game. After a 62-point outing for the East Central offense in week one, they've been slowed down quite a bit here in week three. Mula will stay in at quarterback. One running back to the left. Mueller looks to throw over the right side. He's got a man open down the sideline. It's Grace. It's going to be caught all the way past the 40-yard line. Jamar Grace, who a leading receiver after week one, comes up with a big catch on a go route. Nice play by Mueller seeing, recognizing that one-on-one coverage and found his receiver for a big gain. All the way up to the 45-yard line. Let's see if they'll let him air it out a little bit more here on this drive. Looked comfortable there in the pocket. Mueller takes the snap. He drops it. And Hines has to fall on it. It was Zaylon Johnson who was able to fall on it. Back at the 40, second and 15. It looked like they were going to try to hand it to Johnson after a big throw down the right side. Under 420 to play here in the third quarter. Omo Croner, the quarterback coach, will signal down on the sideline. Running back to the right. Two receivers out to the right. The snap. Mueller looks to drop back and pass. He's got a scramble. Under pressure, he slips out of it. Now scrambles to the left. He's got a little bit of running room. Cuts and is hit from behind. His helmet flies off. So they're going to have to send out the freshman, Jordan Batty, who led Hines to the field goal on the last drive. Mula tried to escape, was close to getting out of it, but just didn't have anybody down the field. Third down, 18 yards to go here for Hines. Empty formation. But T's capable of even running for the 18 here. Three receivers to the bottom of the screen, two to the top. A bad snap, but T has to scramble. He's hit in the backfield and will be taken down all the way back at the 28-yard line. 
Williams' snap was low. We've seen it a couple times tonight, but T unable to handle it. And it'll send the punting unit on after what a, uh, was a big play from Grace trying to set up a scoring drive. Just not what you want if you're the Eagles there. Three straight negative plays. And like you said, the drive looked very promising after that deep ball by Mueller, and then you have a couple bad snaps here and there. Get kind of behind in the chain game, if you will, and you know having to punt here. Hollingsworth out to punt. A low line drive kick will be caught at the 31-yard line. He'll look to go up the middle, and what another good hit on special teams. This special teams unit, especially defensively, has been good tonight. That time it's a big hit from McCrary, Seven yards on the, return. the freshman defensive back. Ball will be placed at the 37-yard line for the East Central offense. Tucker leads his team back out on the field. The offense stalled on their last drive after having the ball at the 25-yard line. He drops back, looks to throw. He's going to take a shot downfield. He's got a man. No, it's going to be picked off by Chaney. Chaney picks it off at the 37-yard line. He's going to return it on the right side. He's got space in front of him. Past the 35, he steps out of bounds. A big play from the Eagles' defense. Chaney cuts off the receiver and just snatches it out of his hands. You couldn't ask for more from the defense through two weeks, and they're just giving you more and more every week as Cheney gets his first interception of the season. Also another turnover for this Heinz defense, and maybe this can be the momentum shift they need to try to take a lead here. Let's see where Heinz goes with it. Mula at quarterback, the running back, Jamarian Johnson. Two receivers, bottom of the screen, one to the top. Mueller drops back. He's going to take a shot down to the right side. It's going to be caught there by Wallace. If he wanted it, Grace had some plenty of space down the right side. I thought that's where he was going with it. Yeah, exactly. I thought he was going to hit that corner route, and you kind of, by your emotions, it sounded like you saw the same thing there. But still a good pickup there on first down. It's going to be second and one. Man was... Grace open down the right sideline. Still a completed pass, still nine yards. Here's the handoff to Johnson. Does he have enough for a first down? They'll blow the whistle. It looks like he maybe just got to that chain. Yeah, it's definitely going to be close here. They're going to say third and one stopped right there at the line of scrimmage. This is where the offense has struggled. In this short yardage Third and one, fourth and one. They haven't been able to pick up that one yard. Let's see if they try to get Mueller out of the pocket here. Try to get a nice, easy dump down in the flats. The snap, handoff up the middle. It's Johnson. Johnson bounces out to the left side, all the way up to the 20-yard line. Just tackled inside the 20. It's going to be a pickup of four yards for Hines. Nice play by Johnson. He tried to go up the middle. Nothing was there, so he bounces it outside for a first down for the Eagles. Under two minutes to play here in this third quarter. And four yards, first down, Eagles. Ryan, Samaria, Mueller takes the snap, looks to hand it off again. He does, up the middle. A hole for Johnson. Johnson inside the 10-yard line down to the six. Hines looks to go fast. They're going to probably try to get it to Johnson again. Jamarian Johnson to the left of Mueller. No, now he switches to the right. Two receivers to the bottom of the screen. Mueller takes it. To Johnson. Johnson makes a cut. He'll be hit right away. A pickup of one. And now they'll bring in the big back, Jaden Reed. Can also take this to the fourth quarter if they choose. 17 seconds to play here in the third quarter. Reed to Mula's right. Mula takes a snap. He keeps it. He's going to take a juke at the five, inside the five, and down to the four-yard line. A good read. However, the backer came and filled the spot just like it was supposed to be filled, and it looks like they'll go wildcat. No, it's going to be Batie who comes in at quarterback as the quarter comes to a close. After three quarters, we're tied at 10. 
We'll send it to the fourth after the break. I was born in India and I, uh, I moved to the USA in 2015. I picked up tennis in 10th grade and I didn't even know what tennis was. Started picking it up, got better, and then now I'm here with a scholarship for tennis. Fall semester was, was one of the, the best four or five months I've had in, in a while. I've, I've met a lot of new people. I don't wish that I went to a four-year college. I just felt like home. I wanted to go into nursing because I really enjoy helping people. I love everything about nursing, and I initially wanted to do this years ago, so I'm actually coming back to, you know, fulfill a career that I'm really passionate about. Hines is absolutely wonderful. Your teachers are passionate, and you can tell they love what they do, and it really makes everything just come together and enjoyable. Back here, Raymond, Mississippi. Avery Dugan, Steel Law, Meyer, our producer, Jay Saman. We're set for the start of the fourth quarter. But in at quarterback, three backs in the backfield with him. The snap, hand off to Johnson. No, but he keeps it off the right side. But he's going to walk it in. Touchdown, Eagles. They take the lead, and but he's going to be flagged. He threw the ball about 50 feet up in the air after the touchdown. He's going to be flagged for celebrating. However, he gives the team the lead 16 10. You just can't have that if you're Batie. I mean, I understand the emotions. You're excited. Your first college touchdown right there. But you just got to keep them in check. Yeah, not something you want to start this fourth quarter off. A great play by him to balance it outside to convert for six. But, yeah, just not something you want here. It'll be applied on the kickoff. No, they're going to apply it here on the PAT. So they're going to push it all the way back to the 23-yard line, so it'll make it a 40-yard PAT. Um, just zoom out some area, and then also it's like follow the ball as it goes in the area. No, they're going to scoot their holder, Cox, all the way up to the 25. It's going to be a 35-yard try. The snap down holds good. Kick up from Hollingsworth is straight through. So the penalty doesn't affect the kicking game. And the PAT's up good. 17-10. Hines leads it. It was a seven-play drive. Took two minutes and 32 seconds off the clock. It ends with a three-yard Jordan Batiste score, his first collegiate score of his career, and gives the Eagles a 17-10 lead. left in the ball game. Hines leads it by a touchdown. Tanner Hollingsworth set to kick off from the 35. Two deep men back for East Central. Jordan Collum back to return here for East Central. Hollingsworth approaches it, plants the left foot, through with the right. A high kick will be caught at the five-yard line. The return out to the middle. Now a cut to the right, up to the 25. He makes a man miss but gets tripped up just before the 30-yard line. That was Gentry Jordan who was on the return, just got tripped up. He had some open field ahead of him. The ball will be spotted at the 28-yard line. That's where the Warrior offense will come out. Chris Tucker under center. Plenty of time left in this ball game. Kazi just to the left of Tucker. The snap, now a quick throw out to the right side. It's going to be cut along the right side and a shoelace tackle on the right side by Kelby Holmes after Patton makes the catch on the screen game. First down, Warriors. Kelly 
Looks like the Warriors are trying to go quick here. They do. The snap, Kasi up the middle. He's going to be tackled immediately. He's going to be taken down at the 40. Ellis makes a tackle there, the defense alignment. Kazi saves to the left side of Chris Tucker. Three running backs, or excuse me, three receivers out to the left side. Now the handoff to Kasi. Kasi cuts and is tackled at the 45 yard line. A good play there. As it was Clendenin on the stop. Big third down here coming for the Warriors early in this fourth quarter. Hines tries to get some guys, new fresh legs in the defensive front. They do. Third and five. Tucker drops back. He's going to step up in the pocket. He's going to try to get the first. He does in a shoestring tackle there for the linebacker. Brendan Jennings will bring up fourth and two. Jennings just gets enough to bring up a fourth down, and it looks like East Central will send the punting unit out to the field. Back to return for Hines, McCarty Johnson. He had a dangerous return in the kickoff return game earlier this game. Let's see if they, they possibly go a fake here around the 50-yard line, just two yards to go. They won't. They'll punt it. It's a good high punt. Johnson catches it at the 10. He makes one man miss, tries to get out of it, and a shoestring tackle along the 10-yard line. It was a 42-yard punt. It was Jordan Gentry Jordan on the tackle. Gentry Jordan, who almost broke one loose on the kickoff return, comes up big in special teams there with the tackle. And here comes Hines, offense back on the field after a touchdown on the previous drive. We're going on two hours of game time here still. This game's moving by quick. The snap. Mueller looks left. He's got a man. It's going to be batted down at the line. That was a dangerous throw. It was Nick Barnes who knocks it down. Yeah, Barnes timed that perfectly, read Mule's eyes, and almost came up there with the interception. He was looking for Michael Lott across the middle. Lott had settled down in the zone, was wide open if he could get it past the defensive line. Not good news. Williams, the tight end, he's going to come out of the ball game as Chase Tucker comes in. Hand off up the middle. Stop for no gain. Zaylon Johnson on the carry. And now they'll go a four wide receiver set as both tight ends are off the field. Third and nine. 12 15 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Mueller hard count. Now they look to the sideline. Defensive backs creeping up. If they want a one on one, I like your chances with Lot on the bottom side. The snap. Mueller looks to drop back. Under pressure, steps up. He's going to try to run for it. All the way out to the 20. He makes a man miss to the 25. First down, Eagles. Mula moves the sticks again. Just makes the smart play right there. Doesn't try to force anything. Sees plenty of green grass ahead. He made a man miss. He didn't have to make a miss. He could have had the first down. Still makes a play. Yeah, like you said, he had one-on-ones, but nothing was open. He also made a man miss for this first down. Running back to the right. Tied in, in the back, back in the ball game. Hand off and tackled immediately. That time it was Zaylon Johnson on the carry. A loss of a couple. Makes it second and 11. Mueller looks to take the snap. He does. Now he's going to drop back to throw. He's going to step up. He tries to spin, and he's hit. Another sack for this East Central team. A loss of just a couple. He tried to step up into it, which allowed for not as big of a loss as what it could have been, and back to a four-receiver set. Third and 13.
Three receivers, top of the screen. Mula on the low snap, drops back, steps up, more pressure. He's going to try to run for it again, makes a cut at the 25, tackled at the 30, and it won't be enough for a Hines first down. And his helmet falls off again. That's the second time tonight. He's ready to put that shoulder down and go after it. Yeah, he's had some quite a couple of physical runs here tonight to try to pick up those first downs for the Eagles. The offensive line hasn't given him a ton of time on a couple of those passing attempts. Hollingsworth will be back to punt. He'll stand on his 15-yard line. Gentry Jordan will stand on the opposite 40. The snap a little bit high, but it's going to be handled. A good punt over the head of Jordan. We'll take a good Hines bounce inside the 20-yard line. At the 18-yard line is where they'll spot it. That was a good punt there from Hollingsworth. It'll be first and 10 for the 18 as East Central starts their offensive drive here in the fourth quarter. Hasn't found rhythm here in this second half. Their only score is when Hines gave it to him on the 20-yard line. And they didn't gain a yard. They had to kick a field goal. Tucker continues to play quarterback here for East Central. Running back to the left is Cossie. Now he'll send his tight end left to right. That's Ethan Howard. Howard will now go back right to left. The snap. Cossie on the carry. A cut all the way past the 25. He's going to be tackled at the 32-yard line. It was Zach Andrews on the tackle. Excuse me, that's going to be Gilliam, the cornerback. A 14-yard gain. Uh, First and 10 now for the Warriors. Tucker takes it. He's going to play fake over the middle. A catch is made, but he goes down at the 33-yard line, a gain of five. An RPO there reads the linebacker coming downhill, throws one right past him. But it was Jennings who was there to make the tackle. Second and four. Plenty of time still for East Central. Man in motion. Hand off up the middle. No, it's going to be kept by Tucker on the outside. He's going to be hit in a gain of one yard, third and three. There's going to be a man down on the field for East Central. It's going to be one of their offensive linemen. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have that third down play. I wanted to go into nursing because I really enjoy helping people. I love everything about nursing, and I initially wanted to do this years ago, so I'm actually coming back to, you know, fulfill a career that I'm really passionate about. Hines is absolutely wonderful. Your teachers are passionate, and you can tell they love what they do, and it really makes everything just come together and enjoyable. Elite Physical Therapy wishes all the players a healthy and successful football championship season. Elite is proud to serve the local communities with multiple locations, providing secure outpatient therapy and sports medicine services. Our centers specialize in post-op rehabilitation, manual therapy, concussion management, and orthopedics, providing patients convenient scheduling and access to care within 24 hours. If you suffer from an injury, visit MyElitePT.com to find a center near you. That's MyElitePT.com. Elite Physical Therapy, proud to serve the state of Mississippi. We're back in action here in Raymond, Mississippi. Gene Murphy Field at Joe Renfro Stadium. Hines leads 17 10. As the officials are having a conversation down on the field with athletic director Nathan Wehrmeyer. Wehrmeyer will now walk off the field. And the clock will start up, third and three. Looks like Hines may try to bring some pressure up the middle. They do. Tucker drops back. He'll take a shot. It's going to be batted down. It's going to bring up fourth down. 
It looked like it was Travell Vivians who got the hand up on it. He has one pass breakup this season as a defense lineman. And here comes the punting unit for East Central. Cox back to punt. It'll be McCarty Johnson back to return for Hines. He'll go over to the right hash mark at the 25-yard line. The punt is off. It's going to be a short punt. And take a bounce. Hines' direction, and it will be down at the 38-yard line. There was pressure on the punt. It looked like Hines had a chance to get a hand on it, just couldn't quite reach out far enough. Good field position here for the Eagles. Mueller leads his offense back out to the field. The Houston transfer. His pass to Jamar Grace is the longest completion that Hines has had this season. Running back to the right. Mueller takes a snap. Now a handoff. Up the middle, a good, powerful run as Reed lays out the linebacker. A pick up a five. You'd like to see this Eagle offense try to get a rhythm here and also burn some clock as well with the lead in this fourth quarter. Yola looks to his right to make sure everybody's set. Now looks to the left. Right foot in front of the left, takes the snap. He pulls it, and it's going to be a bad read there. The defensive end able to get Mueller. It looked for a second it was going to be the right read, but Mueller wasn't quite able to get out of the outside. He also had somebody to the flat as well if he wanted to dish it out. So it's going to be third and ten. A loss of five. Two receivers out wide to the left. Let's see if they air it out. Mueller drops back. He's going to look to throw. Steps up, has to scramble out to the right, and he's going to be sacked. Mueller unable to get the ball out of his hands, and a big loss on third down will bring the punting unit back out. The Warriors have been doing well with their pressures here in this second half, just mixing it up on that Eagles O-line. Hollingsworth will be back to punt. He stands inside the zone 15. Gentry Jordan back to receive. He's going to be at the 39-yard line. Punt team's missing somebody. They'll send Jaden Reed out there. The punt's off. It'll hit the ground about the 42. Jordan tries to return it. A return of a couple yards out to the 35. And that's where the Warrior offense will start. Not bad field position on their own 35. A 42-yard punt there for Hollingsworth. East Central offense gathers up by the sideline. Now we'll take the field. Cossie the back to the right of Tucker. Three receivers out. Bunch to the left side. Now they motion the tie to Ethan Howard from left to right. They'll take the snap and now a handoff on the right side. Makes a man miss. Up to the 36. He's going to be tackled just about the 39-yard line. Good tackle on the outside. It was Lagarde who makes the play. Second and six. Bunch set. On the 40-yard line. Screen out to the right side. It's going to be Jackson. Jackson catches it. Has space ahead. A stiff arm all the way up to the 40-yard line. And a late hit called on Andrews. And he's down. Hayden Jackson goes down on the sideline. It was a tough decision there from Andrews. as It looked like Jackson just kept running. I think Andrews just thought he was still in bounds. 
Yeah, that is a tricky play, especially when the offensive player is also thought he was in bounds. It's just hard to kind of let up there on the defensive end. It's going to add some yardage to the end of that run, and East Central's offense is looking to score here with just about five minutes to play in the ball game. It'll be all the way up to the 20-yard line. 25-yard line, excuse me. And so the screenplay works, and then you add a little bit more. First and 10 here for the Warriors. Man in motion, now a jet sweep from right to left. He's going to be hit at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be a tackle. It was Armstrong on the jet sweep. A pickup of maybe one yard. Tucker with a running back to his right. He'll look to throw. Looks on the left side. He's got a man open right at the sticks as he makes a man miss. Now is going to be driven out of bounds just at the 10-yard line. Another first down. Clock will continue to roll as we're under five minutes to play. It was Kasi who makes the play. The throw out to the right side, and he's going to be drilled. Ball's loose. It's going to be an incomplete pass. They're going to call it an incomplete pass as Lagarde came up and just nailed him. Yeah, great play by Lagarde to kind of snip that play out, what they were trying to do offensively, and you know, come up with a big hit. Jackson just got lit up. It's going to be second and ten. They can get a first down at the one-yard line. Tucker sends a man in motion from left to right. Now he rolls out to the right. He's going to look to pass. No, throws it back. It's Kasi who catches it, but it's going to be drilled immediately. They sniffed that one out immediately. It was Moffitt and Holmes there for the tackle. Moffitt continues to just be a monster defensively making tackles. Three fifty-four remaining in the ball game. Third and six from the seven-yard line. Two receivers to each side. Cossie goes from right to left. Now they send a man from left to right. The snap hits him in the knees. Now he drops back. He's under pressure. Steps up in it. Spins out of it, but he can't get all the way out of it. It's going to be a sack for the Eagles. It was the whole defensive front that had a chance at him. Finally able to bring him down. It's going to be fourth and nine. Looks like they're going to send out the kicking unit. 3.16 remaining. Mangum comes out. He was one of two last week. He's perfect tonight. The snap's good. The hold's down. Kick is up. Kick is good. 17-13. But Hines gets off the field yet again after allowing a decent drive. Ben not break still. Yeah, you said it. Ben not break. It's been kind of the motto for this defense throughout these three games. It's been very, very consistent. And another win for the defense by only giving up three. 2.54 remaining. Hines will have the football. They'll likely have to pick up a couple first downs. You know, you're, they're probably going to see a timeout used early on, possibly. See what happens. But then if they do use the timeouts early here, they're going to have to still pick up two more first downs because you'll only run 20, 30 seconds off the clock in a couple plays. Yeah, obviously, they got three timeouts left, so they're hoping for a three and out here and save as much clock as they possibly can to get the ball back one more time. And will there be an onside kick is the real question. Likely not this 
early. I mean, we're talking under three minutes, but it's not – you don't have to have it now. The kick will be deep. It'll be Wallace who catches it at the 10. Off to the right side. He's got a little bit of a hole. Makes a man miss. All the way out past the 40, up to the 45-yard line before he's brought down. Again, Wallace, another good return. He's just inches away from breaking one off. Yeah, just another good return by Jamonte Wallace. And like you said, just an inch of daylight after that run, he might have been gone for six. Wallace is shaking up, coming off the field. However, what a return he had. First and 10 at the 45-yard line for Hines. They lead by four. They're probably going to keep it on the ground. East Central loads the box. They'll hand it off. It's going to be Reed. Reed spins. He's going to lose one. Second and 11. I'd love to see a play action here. Try to get one on a bubble screen out to the outside, but show the run, draw people in, have... You know, one-on-one -on -one with one of your best athletes, Jamar Grace, here in the slot. Especially since your corner is playing 10 yards deep. Nobody else within 10 yards of Grace. They'll look to the sideline. If you go with a fake here to Reed, that's going to pull that outside backer who's over Grace in a little bit, too. Clock rolls down to 205. Reed to the left side of Mula. Mula takes the snap, hands it off to Reed. Reed makes a man miss all the way up to the 50-yard line. The pile keeps moving forward, and the forward progress will be stopped inside East Central's 47-yard line. Excuse me, 48-yard line. And East Central will burn their first time out of the half. We'll take one with them. When we come back, we'll have more Heinz football. For more than 40 years, the Heinz Meat Market has provided select choice and prime meats to our local community. Pick up some ribeye steaks hand-cut by students at our meat merchandising program or Heinz Ho smoke sausage you can only find here. The market offers beef, pork, chicken, and catfish. We also carry sides, desserts, and Doc's Gourmet Seasoning. Visit the Heinz Meat Market in Porter Hall on the Raymond campus of Heinz Community College or give us a call at 601 857 3721. I always wanted to be a nurse, so just being in nursing school and fulfilling that later in life, I'm older. I'm one of the older students, not that old, but I'm one of the older students. It was just time to do it. My kids are older. I put that on the back burner so I could raise them. Now it's time for me. So just being able to feel like. Back here in Raymond, Mississippi, is they're going to bring in a new quarterback here, Jordan Batie. To take the snap. He takes it. Low snap. Now they hand it off to Reed. Reed up the middle. And a push. He's got enough. It's going to be a first down for the Eagles. Excuse me. That was not Reed. It was. I believe that might have been 26, if I'm not mistaken. Jacoby Calvin. Yeah, great second effort there by Calvin to move the chains. Well, they, they're marking it short. They must have said he was down early. It looked like this near side official had marked forward progress on the first down. Far side official must have called him down. So the punting unit will come out. 145 to play. A field goal can't win it for East Central, nor can it tie it. Hollingsworth has a chance to really pin this team deep into their own territory. Interesting to see the Warriors, will they try to come and get this punter and try to block it or just kind of play safe and set up for the return? They'll send Gentry Jordan back to return. He'll set up on the 10-yard line. The ball is set on the 47-yard line. Hollingsworth... Back on his own, 38. The snap, kick is off. It's a high kick as Jordan will catch it at the 10-yard line. He's got some space up the right sideline. Tries to make a man miss, cuts back, and he's hit just before the 30-yard line. Big tackle there in the punt return as McRae comes up and makes the hit. Yeah, 
the Greenville, Mississippi native. One thirty-four to play. Can East Central go just about 73 yards and a minute and 34 seconds? And also one timeout left for the Warriors. Tucker takes a the snap. They're going to look to throw it out to the right side. Kasi is out of bounds just past the 30 up to the 32-yard line. And the clock has stopped. A gain of five. Tucker with a running back to his right. Takes a snap, looks to drop back and throw again. This one over the middle, and it's going to be caught and all the way up to the 46-yard line. A good gain there from his running, or excuse me, his best receiver, Hayden Jackson. First and ten. Now they're going fast. He looks out to the right. Now he's going to scramble up across the 46. He's going to try to get to the 50 and steps out of bounds just around that 50-yard line. Once again, getting out of bounds to stop the clock for the Warriors to set up offensively. A gain of four on the play. Second and six. 1-14 to play here in the fourth quarter. 17-13. Hines leads it. You can't leave the quarterback alone. He'll move Kasi from right to left in the backfield. Three receivers to the left side. The snap, now he drops back, looks to throw an out route to the near side. He does. It'll be caught, but just short of the first down. It'll be third and three. Tucker will look over to the sideline. Gets the play call. Three receivers to the right side. And it looks like the white hat will signal for a timeout. Hines will take a timeout here with 1-10 remaining in this fourth quarter. A 17-13 lead. We'll keep it right here. Steel Hines, they're bending, not breaking. On this drive, they have to play a little soft. You can't give up the big play. However, when is that time where you stop playing so soft where you get into that position where you continue to let up, let up, let up before you really start putting it back on them. Yeah, like you say, making an adjustment would be very crucial here. and Maybe send, maybe a linebacker or some, some blitz coverage you're very comfortable with and obviously not getting beat deep has to be a concern. You don't want that to happen. So, yeah, you just got to be more comfortable in your coverage and go, go to what you and your, and your players are most comfortable executing. This defensive backfield for Hines tonight has been phenomenal in the tackling game, but also Cheney had that big interception and then also another interception from the linebacker group. Let's see if they can force another. Two receivers both sides, Kasi to the right of the quarterback. They'll hand it to him straight up the middle. He's going to be hit immediately, but not in time as he picks up the first down. East Central has one timeout to play with. We're under a minute to play. And it looks like a flag's thrown, maybe a false start. It will be. The coaching staff on that far side is furious. Moffitt and Jackson exchange a couple words on the far side. And it pushes them back five yards. I believe there could possibly be a runoff here, a 10-second runoff under a minute to play. Yeah, I agree with that. I think there is going to be a 10-second. False start is called. It'll be on Ethan Howard. It will be a 10-second runoff. So good news for Hines is it's going to be down to 46 seconds. Well, East Central will take the timeout. So that will not have the clock run off. And that will be their final timeout of the half. We'll take a quick break with them and be back with more Heinz football. I was born in India and I, uh, I moved to the USA in 2015. I picked up tennis in 10th grade and I didn't even know what tennis was. Started picking it up 
got better, and then now I'm here with a scholarship for tennis. Fall semester was was one of the the best four or five months I've had in, in a while. I've, I've met a lot of new people. I don't wish that I went to a four-year college. I just felt like a home. Both teams back on the field. The timeout eliminates the 10-second runoff. However, East Central still out of timeouts. 56 seconds to play. Two receivers both sides. Chris Tucker takes the snap, drops back, throws one over the middle. He's hit immediately. That's his tight end, Ethan Howard, who drives his legs forward up to the 39-yard line. Second and nine. Excuse me, second and seven. Clock will run. The snap, throw out to the right side. It's going to be caught. And a tackle on the screenplay all the way down to the 30-yard line. It was Patton who makes the catch. Clock will stop for momentarily, and now it rolls again down to 30 seconds. Tucker running back to his left, drops back. He's going to look to throw over to the left side. It's going to be his tight end, but it's overthrown. The safety was there, couldn't quite get his hands on it. Looked like Walter Owens who was going to try to make a play on it. Couldn't keep his feet quite underneath of him. Good news for East Central. Clock stops. 24 seconds to play. Second and 10. Three receivers out wide to the left side. Tied in to the right side, right next to the right tackle. Tucker looks to the sideline. It's 10 seconds on the play clock. Takes the snap. False start. It's going to be a false start. 10-second runoff. It was the receiver who left early. It's going to be down to 13 seconds to play. They can't stop the runoff anymore. They're out of timeouts. He just took off a... It's a whole second early. He was five feet down the field before the ball was snapped. Ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. They're going to say to reset the game clock. Is there not a 10-second runoff on that? Second and 15, no 10-second runoff apparently. Drops back, looks to throw. Scrambles out to the left. Tries to get out of it. Takes a throw down the field, and it's incomplete. 16 seconds to play. The reason for no runoff there was the clock was stopped. I didn't realize it was stopped in the play before. That's why no runoff on that previous play. Third and 15 from the 35-yard line. 16 seconds to play. Hines lead 17-13. Can they sneak away with their first win of the year? Looking to go 1-0 here in South Division play. Tucker takes the snap, drops back, looks to the left. He's going to throw one out, and it's incomplete. Fourth and 15. The game on the line. If you're at the Eagles defense, just play the sticks back up to where the sticks are. Keep everything in front of you. Kelby Holmes asked for the crowd to get into it. They will. This is the ball game. Chris Tucker has one opportunity. The Hines defense one play away from their first victory of the year. The running back will be to the right of Tucker. Two receivers both sides. He'll drop back to throw. They're going to run at the end zone. Hail Mary. Ball's up in the air. It's up, and it will be intercepted. Hines intercepts it. That's going to be the ball game. 17-13. Hines will end it. The clock is expired, and the Eagles go 1-0 in South Division play. The Eagles get their first victory of the season. It looks like the officials may put some time on the clock. Teams are walking at the 50, and the officials will wave it off. That's the ball game. 
And Hines comes away 1 0 after uh, interception to seal it. What a ball game from the Eagles. And Coach Larry Williams picks up win number 20 here at home. He is now 20 and 5 over his time here at Gene Murphy Field at 